All right. Good afternoon. Um, welcome back to another version of Crash Fellowship video. Uh, Kimani here along with Tej. Uh, but um, I just wanted to come up on here back with another uh, word of encouragement, another message of encouragement that the Lord has placed upon my heart. Um, so today we're going to be, today we're going to be reviewing the Holy Trinity and how it connects. Um, but before I dive in, um, let's get started with a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for allowing us to share your word. Uh, Lord, we ask that you continue to guide this channel and sharing your word and, uh, to, let your word reach as many people as possible um, whatever message you want to be shared place it upon my heart and place it upon the channel's heart and everyone who is involved with this channel uh continue to anoint us with your holy spirit and we continue to praise and glorify you continue to be with us and everything you're doing in jesus name amen Alrighty, so what is the Holy Trinity? The Holy Trinity is God, which is three beings in one. So a lot of times people that um, tend to get the Holy Trinity mixed up because they think it's three different people. Or uh, for instance, they think it's three different gods, but it's actually not. It's God who is three in one. And we have God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And um, I was watching a video uh, with my church youth group a few weeks ago um, when we were doing a virtual workshop. And there was a specific quote that stuck out to me. Uh, and it said something like this it said, when there is diversity in the community, there is unity within the Trinity, which means that God is united as three in one, three beings and all in one, and one entity. Um, so like I just uh, uh, just was mentioning, some, uh, sometimes people mix up the Holy Trinity, um, that some people, they think that uh, us Christians and believers, some people think that we uh, worship three different gods, but we actually don't. We only worship one God. And the Holy Trinity, and like I said, is three beings in one. So, but what people um, should understand is that God is three beings in one entity. That's um, the key point for this message specifically. Um, now, the first scripture reading I'd like to go to is Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father the, and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, basically what this means is this is one example showing how the Holy Trinity is three beings in one. Um, like the verse, that first verse just explained it. Um, we also have, let's also turn to John chapter 15, verse 26. When the helper comes whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he would testify about me. Basically, what I believe Jesus is trying to say here is that he would call forth his Holy Spirit that proceeds from the Father. Um, this is also another example. We can see how the Holy Spirit is connected into one, one body. Um, and if we also take a look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. And I believe uh, that I interpret this that 
God will dwell with those who believe in him and be with those. And it's showing us that God and his spirit uh, will be uh, God and his spirit will be multiple beings is uh, still connected and by one by one entity uh, entity which unites them all. Uh, First Corinthians 12 verses 4 through 6 uh, Now there are varieties of gifts but the same spirit and there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects but the same God who works all things and all persons. Um, basically what I see this is as the Holy Trinity is the same God who will always remain the same and would never change. Um, there's a verse somewhere uh, that says God is always the same, uh, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore and will never change. Uh, John 14 verse 9 Jesus said to him have I been so long with you and yet you have not come to know me Philip he who has seen me has seen the father how can you say show us the father and now this was Jesus talking this is Jesus talking uh, and basically what he's trying to say is whosoever sees the father whosoever sees Jesus sees the father and whosoever sees the Father sees Jesus. Um, uh, yeah, I hope the message is encouraging and uh, hopefully can help uh, people understand how the Holy Trinity works. Um, and I hope there was a good, better breakdown and description, uh, more detailed um, for those who are still um, unsure about how it works. Um, I myself used to be one of those people who wasn't sure how it worked, um, but then kept on looking into it more and more and learned as much as I could about it. Um, so yeah, I hope that this message has been an encouraging message um, for everyone who tuned, tunes in and watches um, as we continue to wait for our our Lord Jesus Christ to return very soon. Um, um, I just wanted to come and give an understanding, um, give a better understanding of what the Holy Trinity is. Um, so thanks to everyone for tuning in. I'll, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a closing prayer. Um, that is a quick breakdown. Uh, and I'm glad that I got to share the message about what I've been learning about um, and everything with you guys on the VLC channel. Um, Father God, we thank you for your time today. Um, thank you for letting us share your message and be an encouragement to those who tune in. Um, we continue to wait on your return and know that you'll be here soon. Just continue to thank you for all that you do. And we continue to glorify you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, God bless everyone. And thank you for watching and listening and tuning in to our message. Um, and we should see you soon uh, in another video, hopefully. Uh, but if not, then hope to see everybody up in the air and flying up in the air. And yeah, have a blessed rest of the week. Uh, take care. God bless you. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.